So, Jenny, welcome. Thank you for jumping in today after our amazing exchange this morning about, we're not going to name the person, everybody has their own viewpoints and opinions of how they think things should be handled. And I want to believe that their intention is truly honourable and they think they're coming from a good place. But you and I have an opinion about thoughts, feelings and emotions, around mental health, around, you know, you and I are not social media influencers, Jen. I'm definitely not. You know, so we are, we're just having a quick conversation off camera before we went live where we're like, we are probably, as Jen, can, Jen, Jen, explain what you see yourself as. I'm like that bit in Jerry Maguire where he talks about when all of this star, like football athletes are on the picture and he's like the arm that you see. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me like, here, isn't it? We, me. we prefer to be the powerhouses behind the scenes rather than the ones at the front yeah. shouting loudly. But you and I also know this is a time that you and I, who have lots of experience, lots of knowledge, lots of skills in this area have to stand up especially when people are putting out there what you and I believe can be very very unhelpful information to people that could be struggling right now yeah so that's why we're here okay Jen do you want to just do a quick introduction and just tell our audience a little bit about you so I'm a hypnotherapist with psychotherapy training I work with clients one-to-one -one, face to face in Manchester and Cheshire and one of the things that I specialize in, maybe because it's a sign of the times or maybe because I've had my own experience as well, but is anxiety and low mood. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm seeing quite a lot of that anyway, generally, but at the moment, you know, people are really feeling triggered. So I'm seeing that a lot more in practice. Yeah. So let's first of all, talk about what is actually I mean, everybody's normal is different, so it's we can't normalise normal. But one of the things that you and I talk a lot about is, is that it's really normal to feel a whole host of emotions as a human being. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. Think we, at the minute, we're in, a lot of people are in this place where, especially on social media, you see a lot of messages around, you know, very extreme ways of thinking, like hashtag good vibes only, hashtag positive vibes all of that or hashtag mental health problem yeah and it seems to be there's quite a lot of kind of extreme thinking and you know we forget and not just happy and positive or negative and bad emotions are just emotions and there's a lot of them that we yeah. don't really talk about yeah and I think it's really safe to say that you know I I you know, I do believe we are going to talk about a few statistics to wrap up with to just give some context in the current moment because those stats could change to what's going on. And I do think the media need to stand back and look at how they've propagated this fear based thinking. What are yeah. your thoughts, Jen? 100%. And I mean, I come from a comms background, so I spent quite a few years working in PR. Um, and I think it was part of my job that I really struggled with. Um, was kind of like biased reporting um, and I think the media have got a lot to answer for you know we've got a lot of people now just people who don't have poor mental health whose fight or flight responses are being triggered um, by this very real threat you know lots of people are going to get poorly yeah um, but that's pretty much where it's just hanging there it's it's you know it's like people are going to die but lots of people are going to be better they're going to get get poorly they might not even have many symptoms and they're going to get better and make a full recovery we're not seeing so many of those stories in the media yeah and um, we're not seeing a very balanced report at the moment yeah um, and it's 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 upsetting a lot of people and you know we talk a lot about anxiety but fear is a real thing for every single person yeah it's a biological response that we've honed for thousands of years yeah um and and it, if we're feeling fear if people have got caught in the fear like in this fear-based crisis thinking which you know you and i sort of speak to a lot of people every week what can some of the symptoms be that they experience as a response to that jen 
Well, fear will initiate your fight or flight response. So I see fear as two quite separate things. Um, fear being you kind of like, you know, seeing a dark, like a dooming, looming dark shadow or a loud noise or whatever. We activate the fight or flight response system and then we act accordingly. We either run away or fight. Sometimes people freeze. Anxiety is slightly different than that. So anxiety is a perceived threat of something that's about to happen or might happen. So we've got fear on this hand and we've got anxiety on this hand and they're, and they're two different things, essentially. Yeah. So what a lot of people are experiencing now is that, that fear. There is a real threat. People are going to get sick. The reality is there, right? Um, and then with that fight initiation, that fight or flight response, or when some people tip over into anxiety, we get a whole load of physical symptoms and psychological symptoms. And a lot, I think, you know, one thing to be mindful of is with the physical symptoms, we will get things like fatigue, interrupted sleep. Some people, when they get very anxious, sweat a lot increased temperature, chest pains, restricted breathing, shortness of breath, lots of things that actually, when we're in that fight or flight response, may seem similar to COVID-19 symptoms. Yes. Yeah. So it's tricky. So, you know, we've got a lot of people in a heightened state of awareness, they're being hypervigilant, and then some of these anxiety symptoms can also, you know, be yeah and also what happens when we're in when we're in a really heightened state of anxiety and fear what happens to our health system as a whole Jen? I mean you know we'll all experience some kind of anxiety at some point normal exam stress fear of public speaking hi um you know <laughs> what, <laughs> and this is a normal level of anxiety yeah get that you know there's a there's that small threat to kind of oh what will people think oh I don't like it you know and that's totally normal when you keep triggering that response you're dumping adrenaline into your body constantly all the time yeah you're not giving your body time to settle down to its normal rate you're constantly triggering that response it affects your sleep makes you tired it can affect your immune system we so literally can literally lower our immune system by the way that we're thinking feeling and behaving yeah in this heightened stress state which is super unhelpful for we our might, health in general we might reach for a drink yeah a glass of wine to take the nerves like just calm the nerves take the edge off before yeah. bed disturb your sleep again increases the temperature in the night people might wake up feel a bit panicked have i got a temperature oh my goodness yeah and we're in that we're constantly in that loop um you know, and we can start then engaging in all different types of behaviours to soothe this anxiety and suppress this fear and actually then has a knock-on effect on our health overall. Yeah, so we have allegedly, I'm going to use that word allegedly, had uh, people talk about them getting feedback from kind of younger people, younger generation, the age gap is not very, the age range is not very clear, that are locking themselves away. They're in total fear of becoming sick and poorly. And that's having a knock on uh, catastrophic thinking and behavior around the rest of their life. Now, you and I have a very clear action plan in if you are in that remit, whether you're 18, 16, or 72 and anything in between what from your point of view Jen and I know it's mine as well how what is the tools that we can initiate to support ourselves to get actually in the moment rather than in the catastrophic thinking well there's a few like kind of quick wins I would start off with especially because at the moment we're not quite sure in terms of self-isolation whether we're going to go to a place where Italy are now, where lots of people are indoors. The first thing I would say in this situation is stay connected. Yeah. Talk to people and however you are, whether you're self-isolating or, you know, for whatever reasons you've got symptoms or you're at risk and you're vulnerable, stay connected, be talking to people because long periods of isolation and loneliness can yeah. also increase poor health. Yeah. Uh, we need to be connected as human beings. So, 
if you can't, you know, reach out to helplines, Joe, you're going to share. Yeah, we're going to share in the links below at the end of the Facebook. We're going to share lots of links uh, that Jen has brilliantly put together for you. And hopefully if you need them, they're going to be there. But speak to friends and family about how you're feeling, get in touch with helplines. And that's not just if you are, but if you're living with somebody or know somebody that's feeling really triggered and vulnerable at the moment, there's a um, helpline on there that you can speak to to get to support, support people who are also struggling um, talk to a therapist or you know if you are seeing a therapist right now and you need an extra session or actually you want a bit more support just reach out and ask for that little bit more support in between sessions because you know some people that maybe aren't triggered normally by this kind of thing they're really you know starting to to worry now um, if you're not self-isolating get outside if you don't want to go into a gym because it's all Jamie, I don't, I don't know about you, but there has never been a better time to be in a gym as far as I'm concerned, because literally everybody is spraying constantly. I wish we'd do it more. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't want to be in a gym and you're nervous about that, try and get out and you're not self isolating try and get outside. Yeah. First thing in the morning, if you can, cortisol's at its highest in the morning. So if you can get out for a walk in the morning, even if it's around the block, you know, um, even if it's really early, super, yeah. you know, if, if you are nervous about bumping into people, I would highly recommend one of my elderly neighbours. I live in, I mentioned on Instagram yesterday, I actually live in quite an ageing community. A lot of people live in these houses have lived in here for like a lifetime. Um, and uh, one of the elderly couples who I know are getting up at six o'clock every morning to go for a walk for half an hour. Now, if, if they can do it at their age, and we are self-isolating, then get up and get out early. Just go and have that 20 minutes, 50 minutes, however long, you know, just, you know, don't even bother having a wash, just put some outdoor clothes on and get out the door because you will feel so much better for it. Yeah, increasing the endorphins. Yeah. So if you've got a friend as well that's maybe like, isn't showing any symptoms, you want to walk with them again, it keeps that connection. Um, Try and eat as well as you can. Try and avoid things like caffeine and sugar. We know that they make us feel really great because they give us, you know, a high and gives that energy. But actually as well, if you are feeling a little bit anxious and you feel like your heart's racing a little bit and the caffeine and the sugar just kind of gives you that little bit of digy feeling, try and stay away from that. Um, try and avoid, if you can, drinking um, as a way to suppress your emotions just because we know it can affect your sleep then that can have a knock-on effect on other things as well. So, um, and just try and practice and engage in some relaxation responses. Yeah, because so, you, we shared, you shared a really interesting thing about, uh, about now is not the time, maybe, to be starting breathing exercises. This was really, really interesting when we spoke earlier this morning. If you're not, if you're not somebody that practices breathing exercises, um, now might not be the right time to practice them just because again you know that sometimes it can be a bit of practice to learn how to breathe and initiate that relaxation response if you're feeling anxious it can you know sometimes make people hyperventilate or feel a bit uncomfortable with their breathing um if you are showing symptoms and you're struggling with your breath anyway probably not a good idea to be engaging in breathing exercises um so yeah i would Look at engaging your relaxation response. So there's a really good technique that I use and it's about bringing yourself into the present. So when you're feeling that fear, that real immediate threat and you're feeling anxious and your mind's taken away about all these big possibilities that are going on, what you want to do is ground yourself, bring yourself into it's the a, present. It's a feeling in the body, isn't it, Jen? Isn't yeah. it? It's like it can be most, you know, you and I talk to a lot of people about where they feel things in their body. It can be your gut, it can be your chest, it can be your throat. It literally, people can be tingling from head to toe and holding themselves super, super tensely. And it's getting people to go, okay, what, what, what am I feeling right now? Just stopping and pausing, going, connecting with what they're feeling. And yeah. again, being okay with feeling what you're feeling because the tool, you're going to give us a, a tool now. Mm -hmm. And later in the week, I'm going to do another Facebook Live to go into a bit more detail about cookie thinking and giving people some balanced thoughts and actions. So I just wanted to add that because I think it's about slowing down, isn't it, Jenna, going, oh gosh, I am feeling caught up in my chest. Oh, I am feeling this pain in my stomach. I am feeling this. 
right, now is the time to initiate yeah. what Jen's going to tell me. So I practice and I ask my clients to practice a grounding technique called 54321 technique. Yeah. So that will help you get into the present it's physically impossible for you to be anxious and relaxed at the same time yeah love it, that it, it, you can't love do that it. yeah um it takes a bit of practice so bear with it's not i'll do it this one time and actually the more you practice it even when you're not anxious then when you do engage in it like any kind of behavioral training that you do your brain will go oh you want me to do that thing right yeah so practice it, practice it even when you're not anxious. So I ask clients to name five things that you can see around you. That could be anything, doesn't matter how random it is. I ask you to think about four things that you can feel. So, you know, the texture, some texture of my necklace or my hair or my blouse or the desk. Yeah. Then three things that you can hear traffic outside the window my dog crying somewhere because he wants to get on the bed um two oh, things. Our facebook live he's heard how brilliant we are at them God. honestly he's, he's he gets too much attention is it he's not jerry Maguire. he's oh no he's a very naughty boy <laughs> um is the two things that you can smell or if you can't smell something immediately two things that you that are your favorite smell something that you like to smell um and then one good thing about yourself yeah and what i will normally say is some a very strong affirmation um, if you can't think of something straight away um, some really good especially at the moment good strong affirmations to say to yourself is i have phenomenal coping skills yeah. i have a strong healthy body yeah. really because is we need to be thinking about these things. If you've got phenomenal coping skills, then even if you do get COVID, you know what to do. You've got this. Yeah. So if you can't think of one good thing about yourself, try and imagine a positive affirmation that you would like to, to start thinking and implement. Introduce into your life, yeah. Yeah, so, because I know that the influencer who shall not be named um, was saying that, what was put out there was then yeah I'm feeling this way and I want to lock myself away and and you know I'm terrified I'm terrified now Jen you you know me pretty well and you know that I have you know a really good resilience and there is nobody more than me who now I've been working with this material around cookie thinking and balanced thoughts and balanced actions for, you know for 12 years now and there is nobody more than me who's like come on let's let's change our mindset this is not helpful this is let's do something about it but let's use this tool instead of thinking you're just going to change your mind like that let's use a tool that you've just used there the five four three two one technique that helps you go from i'm in crisis i'm terrified i don't know what to do to to slowly bring you to this conscious place so what is the thing that we need to, how many, so with the five, four, three, two, one technique, especially when you, you know, you and I know, it's not like we do it once and we're going to feel great. No. It could be that if you are in absolute terror, you might need to do that 10, 15 times in a day. Yeah. And that's okay. And actually for where you're at, and it, like I said at the beginning, everybody's normal is different but that is okay. Please do not expect to use these techniques once and go, oh, I feel okay now. And then, then forget to keep using them and go, oh, they were rubbish, they didn't work. I promise you, if you have that let's go attitude on doing the work to getting feeling better, you are putting yourself in a really good state of mind of feeling better. Yeah. Um, one of the, well, we've got a few things to talk about is, um, limiting your media coverage oh yeah I mean it's really tricky isn't it because I one of the things I do with clients is I do this this um talking about challenging thoughts and uh, challenging thoughts like cookie thoughts or, or thoughts that are disturbing thoughts yeah um, uncomfortable thoughts and challenging them yeah and I'll say you know is this a fact or yeah. is it your opinion yeah. If it's an opinion, how has it been informed? Yeah. How do we know it to be true? Yeah. Where's the facts for it? Where's, where's the evidence? And the tricky thing we've got at the minute with the news is we've got such a scattered kind of news reporting 
that actually then you know we've got somebody saying oh we're going for herd immunity and then someone saying oh no that's not what the government are doing the government are doing something that something else so we're in a tricky situation at the minute because if i if i say like well how do you know that you you know you're going to get it is that a fact or an opinion the fact sources that we're going to at the minute there's a little bit of conflict there isn't there because nobody everybody still feels like they're not quite sure yeah so with your news sources i you know go to trusted news sources go to the world health organization go to public health england yeah. make sure don't i think it's about knowing as well how i'm sorry you know i'm teaching some people here how to suck eggs but you know big gentle chat, yeah chat rooms forums you know they get the higher they go up in google on the organic search is the amount of times that people click on them if people are constantly seeing scary news stories or you know things that are, are a little bit unnerving and they're continually clicking on them they're going higher and higher up in google and we're seeing them more in our searches so if you are going to look for news if you are going to look for up-to-date information go to places like the nhs website public health england and the world health organization try to limit your media consumption as much as you can yeah. look, look for something more balanced be looking for those stories of of recovery not just worst case scenario mm -hmm. um, and also having the back of your mind that journalism is a very competitive industry they're all competing for the new news the big news the story that's going to give them the edge over the other news channel and just having that in the back of your mind everybody wants that big stamp of i broke the first bit of news on coronavirus and it you know be, have that in the back of your mind as well yeah um and one, so one of the things that I was saying to our, our community yesterday was, you know, lim limit yourself to five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon from reputable sources, you know, switch off the Sky News, switch off the BBC News, because one of the things that I was hearing is specifically over the last 10 days, that people were just constantly watching the news. So they were constantly hearing sort of just slightly different versions of the same thing that was kind of like getting into their bodies and ramping up this heightened state of panic. So, and I know myself, you know, um, I do get, you know, told off by certain people, not in a mean way, but that I should be more actively involved in understanding what's going on in the world. But I do the same thing five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, just need the headlights, need the facts, stick to very specific news sources, um, especially around health, the ones that we've named today. But because I know it literally changes my mood if I go somewhere that is just bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, because there is not just bad news out there in this world today. Oh, no. No, absolutely there, not. There is not just bad news out there at all. Now, if we are, um, over the coming weeks, if you do have to self-isolate, we, you know, that could, be the tr that could be the truth, that could be what happens with some people. Um, I think it's really important, one of the things that I've said is that you said at the start of the day, whether you're self-isolating for work and your work takes decided action to get you all to work from home. This is not about sitting on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep working, keep connecting, keep your, you know, do your Zoom meetings, do your Facebook um, Facebook meetings, messenger meetings. This is not the time for us to be downing tools as a community, as a nation. This is the time for us to build our resilience and stand up and go, right, what can we do? How can we do things differently? What, how can we pivot? How can we, you know, I had one of my clients message me earlier saying, hey, what's the um, technology that you're using today? Because I think one of my clients is going to do it to do some workouts for his so he can get everybody online doing workouts at the same time that they would be in his gym doing workouts right, and he will that. adapt them so he's not resting back on his laurels and we're the same thing you step forward and step up please don't use this as an excuse to kind of down tools stay connected and keep conscious with your business your career and show up and be the peak person that you kind of really want to be yeah and i would say that and i think just because it's been topical at the moment i think one of the things that this influencer talked about in their post was saying depressed people are telling me that they're really depressed obviously with what went on before coronavirus got very quick with you know the sad passing of caroline flack 
if you do know somebody that has got low mood or is struggling with depression and they, you know, they are going to need to self-isolate because they're vulnerable or work say so or whatever the reason they're showing symptoms, keep reaching out. One of the main things with people with depression, even if it's mild, is this perceived loneliness. Yeah. They really truly believe that they are alone. Yeah. And so the prospect of self-isolation and being home alone when they're already dealing with those feelings is pretty real. Yeah. Um, you know, it's validation. I, I'm alone. See, I definitely am alone now because I'm stuck in this house on my own with nobody. Yeah. So, I mean, even more so than ever now, be trying to reach out to people that, you know, are struggling with those feelings mm -hmm. because self-isolation to somebody who's struggling with depression is, is, is yeah, pretty grim. Um, so, yeah, I think when we were talking about my influence in particular, I thought, wow, if it was just as easy as, like, not being depressed, yeah. eh? <laughs> yeah, you, just, you, just, you just don't want to be depressed. And it's like I, I was saying earlier, there is nobody with more with a get-up-go attitude than me, and you know that. I'm like, come on, yeah. let's go. But I don't mean let's go on just change our minds. It's let's go and use the tools, the tools that we talked about today, 54321, any of your tools in the toolkit. I'm going to be showing up online probably three times more this week, teaching you some very specific tools that help you get really conscious. You know, this isn't... Uh, I'm being careful not to give away who we're talking about because I do believe that their intentions, I have, you know, I come from a place, Jen, and I've said this to you, that people do things from their value system that they believe is right and right. Yeah. And so therefore, you know, but you and I were incensed at what we saw about somebody giving mental health advice to people who could be truly in a very, very tight spot. And that is why we were like, we're going to get on the, we're going to get on the Facebook and we're going to say, this is the situation. We can, we are in this very weird, unprecedented times that has been whipped up by the media, which has caused this you know, supermarket kind of dramatic situation. I haven't been able to have poached eggs for my breakfast this morning. I had some porridge. <laughs> porridge, people. Uh, which is nice. That's actually good. very good for you. So it is very good. And porridge and breakfast <laughs> pollinated organic honey. It was very nice. But we, you know, there is people we have it's not just about being at people being able to change their mind. We want to say use the tools and get conscious and practical and think about how we can do things better going forward. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you want to add on, Jen? I'm I think the main one for me is just, you know, just be kind to each other. Yeah. And if, as much as you possibly can, you know, if there are people that you know that are, that are self-isolating, that are struggling, reach out, leave them a bag of shopping on the front door, you know, um, just do something kind if you can because hopefully then you know we can we can help people feel less alone and less anxious at a time you know where we're all pretty pretty nervous yeah and I think one of the things that I would say is you know if think about the the, the tool that what Jenna's talked about today that anxiety has the capacity to mimic some of the COVID-19 symptoms so really put into play this five, four, three, two, one tools, you know, do it 10 times a day, 15 times a day so that you can see where you're at. I would highly recommend, you know, if you haven't got one, don't panic. But if you highly recommend, if you have got a thermometer in the house, get it out. You know, that's yeah. one of the things that I, because I live in an aging community, I went out yesterday and delivered cottage cottage pie that I made I made cottage pie last week for a few of the elderly people I got told that I needed to improve my gravy so I've improved my gravy this week <laughs> um, but only one of them they said I said she needs to improve your gravy so I improved my gravy but one of the things that I honestly did before I before I even started cooking I checked my temperature because yeah. I think that that is just you know if I'm going to be cooking for a few people in the community and just check your temperature um, I think this thermometer is still available on Amazon that you can get delivered to home it's not a mega mega thing but if it's so if, if that helps you one of the things that helps you come into consciousness to go okay I'm not running a temperature so let me do my five four three two one techniques and then let me see how I feel if I if I consciously do them for over a three four hour period yeah. And I think it's exactly that, you know, 
if you do really gen if you've done if you've ticked all the boxes i've not been abroad to these countries i've not been in touch with anybody that's been infected i've been really vigilant i've been hand washing i'm not showing any any like the temperature symptoms like go through that process of elimination first um i would never say don't see you know don't, don't seek medical help if you're really poorly don't just be like oh well you know jenny told me it was, might just be anxiety just do that that process of going through all of those things that joe and i have mentioned and if you then start running attention you are feeling really really poorly go go and seek attention medical attention yeah or do follow, that the, or, follow you know. the advice on the nhs website yeah um and what i would say is if you are feeling unwell avoid traveling yeah. because we are all about protecting the elderly and the people with vulnerable underlying health conditions yeah. that is really really important and that's one of the things that kind of incensed jen and i where this person was saying f covid19 and we're like no that is not the point let's get conscious and sensible and responsible and responsive and take action not f what is going on in the world so if you are feeling unwell, you know, do think about avoid traveling, think about going near the elder, elderly people, think about how you interact with those people. I was talking to somebody who was concerned about their mum who um, is a bit unwell at the minute. And I was talking about when, um, 10 years ago, it was the SARS outbreak, wasn't it? it was mm. And my mum was, um, was terminally ill. She was towards the very end of her life. And we were like, you know, we, were, we had that sensible conversation. What's the most important person for our mum right now? And it was to see people. So we put, you know, this was 10 years ago and we were like, right, okay, nobody's to sit on her bed. Everybody, you know, we, everybody who comes to see her, let's keep them, you know, four feet away. We asked everybody to antibacterial wash their hand once and not, and not to hug and kiss her. But we had managed to keep her exceptionally well through that really challenging, healthy time whilst keeping her spirits up. And I think it's that whole thing, isn't it? It's about just looking at where you are and how sick you are, how uncomfortable you feel, you know, check your temperature and look, check with the current guidelines. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm just gonna read out, I just checked with Jen before we come on, I pulled up some stats. Now, what we've got to remember is these are stats as of this moment. That doesn't mean these stats aren't gonna change. They could go up, they could go down, but I think it's really important that we think, I'm just gonna read it because I pulled it together. So one of the things that we know with COVID-19 is the situation is changing daily and it's probably gonna to continue to change for the next few weeks. And people like Jen and I who are checking World Health Organization website, we are being conscious to stay up to date with the issue as much as possible because we are, we are constantly dealing with people's thoughts, feelings and emotions, organizations, careers and businesses. And so we wanna be as, as up to date as possible. Um, and also I'm getting daily updates from some of the health professionals that I'm around who are like, this is where we're at, this is what's going on. These are some of the challenges that we've got right now, but we are okay in the community. Not really quite sure what's going on in the hospitals at the moment, but in, in the community, they are okay. Um, the panic and mass hysteria is the bigger problem at the minute rather than the virus, would you say, Jane? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's, 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 it's a big thing. Yeah, it's the panic and the mass hysteria because, because of the, this news media place that we've been whipped up into, people don't really understand what is going on. So they're constantly, like you say, going looking for information where it's then, you know, the algorithms are triggering these platforms that are just not giving out the correct advice and information. Yeah, so we're we making machines, Joe, that's like, and that's the thing, if we're not informed, if we don't feel like we've got the information, it doesn't feel right to us. Yeah. We are meaning making machines as humans. We will go out and we will find yeah. answers, Something. whatever we can to try and like calm down that fight or flight response to try and soothe that anxiety. And unfortunately we're looking in the wrong places sometimes. And equally as well, Jen, I don't know about you, people are so bought into wanting to be right, they'll look for evidence that makes their fear right. Oh yeah, validation, of course. Yeah, validation. So all this kind of um, panic and mass hysteria that's been worked up by the media, they've got to take responsibility for some of this, mm -hmm. um, is causing people to really overreact out of fear. So that is something that we're one of the reasons why, our main reason that we wanted to get on today, because we want, you and I are very, 
passionate about helping people ease the fear and give them the facts as we know it today. Okay, so a lot of people get the flu during flu season. Um, apparently it was a particularly bad flu this year, which we are still technically in flu season. And according to research on the National Library of Medicine, the flu has a worldwide death rate of 2% of all respiratory deaths, okay? Over 65% of those who uh, get uh, uh, die of the flu are over 65 or of poor health. So that is why self-isolation, social isolation, social distancing rather, is really important at this time because we want to protect those elderly and vulnerable. So if you compare COVID-19 um, with where we're at, it's two to four times currently with what we know more contagious than regular flu and so if we think about that for a moment lots of people get the flu so two to four times more people will get this current virus so more people are going to get sick but it's important we stay super calm this means people will get sick but we're not finished learning the facts yet so we've got to be conscious so the World Health Organization at this moment have brought us to this point and say the death rate of COVID-19 is 3.4%. Is 3 so 2% normally, and we are currently at a statistic of 3.4% with the statistics that we have today. So that's about 1.5 times higher than, than the regular flu that we get at this time of year. So, Jen, what's your thoughts when we think about those statistics compared to the panic and fear that's, that's literally polluted the world? I mean, again, it feeds into that, that reporting of kind of like not, not being honest about the people that are getting better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, where we're at, the numbers are about the same as flu deaths, but the vast majority of those that are dying are in really poor health, uh, especially if they're older. So here's the new, here's the balanced side of that. COVID is more contagious, uh, but um, but fewer people will actually die from it. It's it's a flu-like virus, a very very nasty flu-like virus. And WHO estimates that eighty percent of people recover. So eighty percent of people are going to recover without any issues, just like flu. Some people get it and don't even have any symptoms. Um, excuse me. And many people are really worried about the kids. But for the most part, as we understand it from the WHO website, the kids are not particularly getting sick from it at the moment. Um, so it's really important for self, um, so social distancing and isolation, if that's the instruction that you are given. Because the virus is more contagious and more people will get it, um, some people are going to be asked to stay away from other people and to try and slow down the spread. Um, the real problem what's going on right now is, is that um, I was talking earlier that I went into Marks and Spencers to try and find some eggs. You can tell I'm bitter about the eggs. And a Marks and Spencers cafe was packed to the rafters at the weekend. And it wasn't, it was, it was that elderly pub, that slightly older generation that were all there having their afternoon teas and they were queuing out the door. So it is really important. And one of the um, conversations that I had earlier today is that she was talking about her parents were saying that their, their opinion was, well, we have to self-isolate for four to eight weeks. We don't want to do it too quickly because we might get fed up being at home. And I understand that. I really, really understand that. But I think that's where it comes from. You know, these pre-war, slightly post-war babies that are like, come on, let's crack on. But when you look at the statistics and you actually get it into context, compared to how a lot of us are panic buying and fear based, this is going to help us really think about what to do. So the vast majority of people who get the virus will recover just fine. But we've got to be mindful over the next few weeks about what we hear in the news, where we go and get our news facts from, and the tools that we use to get ourselves out of fear-based thinking and actions. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about those statistics? Well, I just keep sick. I mean, that, that comes from us, doesn't it? Being, you know, ever, the ever practical ones of 80% yeah. of us are going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think that's just it's probably, going to get better yeah. with no, with kind of like with no issues at all. But yeah. you know, if you think about the, you know, 3.4% compared to 2%, that's a really important statistic for us to remember. We're yeah. only tracking at the moment 1.5% higher um, tragedy than we are with a normal flu season. And I think it's that, like you say, it's that being, res- it's being responsible yeah. in terms of knowing that it, it is easier to pass around. Yeah. Being responsible for that, being part of that response, that, that statistic yeah. and knowing that it's 1.5% higher, but actually I can do something about that. I need to be more responsible. Yeah. I've got a chance of giving it to X more people than I would have normally. Yeah but also being realistic about that chance of recovery being really, really high. Yeah. We, and we, you know, we are, we, this is not about COVID. This is about us saying, this is the practicalities. This is where we're at. And these are the tools that you can use. So we are, we scrambled to get this together today, didn't we, Jen? And, And do you know what? I think for me, you know, out of that, that particular post that we're talking about, the thing for me that I suppose made me feel most sad is, and I see it a lot with clients, is you're disqualifying people's feelings. Yes. And it's not cool. Yeah. So, you know, for some people, and I agree with you, for some people that watched that particular post, they will have took a lot from it and gone, yeah, yeah, right, come on, I'm going to get myself together, I'm going to sort myself out, I'm going to, you know, do whatever I need to do and do me hashtag good vibes only or whatever. Yeah, and we'll have took a lot from that, and that is great. But there'll be a lot of people there that have reached out to this person individually, and in that moment, they really look up to. Yeah, you've re- you, the the feelings have been disqualified. Yeah, and you know, just because some of your emotions sometimes are uncomfortable, it doesn't make them bad, and yeah. it doesn't mean they're not they don't feel any more real to you. Yeah, um, just because somebody else doesn't get it. Yeah, um, and I think that was the main the main take home. Yes, we're all feeling very fearful. There is a real threat to a lot of people's health. Yeah, so that makes sense that people are feeling fearful. If you if you're tipping into anxiety, um, and you're finding yourself struggling, there are things that you can do, ways of being able to ground yourself, to cope, to challenge your thoughts. Is this a fact? Is this my opinion? How do I know? How do I evidence that? Is there another way that I can look at this instead? yeah um and just being able to kind of you know a- acknowledge those feelings but then go okay well I'm going to think about how to deal with that not like man up <laughs> yeah. man up get on with it yeah <laughs> this disease yeah no that is not the plan so Jen we are going to put all the um, helplines that you've put together we're going to put this in the comment section in the Facebook live um, we are also going to put a little link you you can join it you cannot join it it's no commitment whereas because we, uh, we're going to I'm going to be putting together three more pieces of content where you can join us where I'm going to show you how to flip the thinking with and help you understand kind of what we call um crooked thinking so I'm going to do a a really simple workshop on that it's a powerful powerful tool that I have in my leadership toolbox for all the leaders but anybody can use it also going to run a really simple workshop on something that I've been doing and I post a lot on my Instagram stories about it morning journaling mega powerful and I may look as an EFT therapist I may look at putting an EFT script together for you um but let's just what I want to do is don't want to bombard you with loads of things I would rather you do the five four three two one technique the flip the thinking technique because it's really important that we get conscious and maybe some morning journaling and help you build out a base camp habit stack that's not just going to support you in these times it's going to support you and build resilience when we are past this and through this and we're on the other side Jen thank you you're gonna can Jen can you put a link in the comment section to you and where people might be able to find you if they want to reach out to you um and thank you so much for joining in the mad scramble this morning that started about eight o'clock didn't it started about have you seen this yes I've seen this well this is not right and we're not having this yes. <laughs> yeah um so thank you and so we definitely much. did not look like this yeah, oh, have you ever seen us when we were testing 
technology, our community did see us because we were like, we're just going to test it in the community. So they know what we look like when we were yeah, trying like, to figure this out. You're going to delete this, aren't you, Joe? <laughs> So Jen, thank you so, so much for joining me today. Really powerful, really helpful. Um, anybody, Jen is going to put some uh, put her links in the section if anybody wants to reach out to Jen. I'll put anything else that we have committed to joining on. We will follow up on any of the comments after this because we, we've not worked out all the technology as to how we can do this and be on the comments at the same time. But thank you all for being part of this. Please feel free to share this, to pass it on, you know, to anybody that you think that this would be really helpful for, because Jen and I are super passionate about supporting people to live bigger, better, more helpful lives that are based on reality and fact, rather than good vibes only. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Jen. Thanks, Jo. Thanks for having me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Speak to you soon. Take care. See you later, my love. Bye.